Hello. I'm going to try and describe to you exactly how this uh, row and column addressing techniques are used in this Braille display unit. We consider this uh, entire uh, page display as a, a matrix of cells, uh, not as individual Braille cells and uh, of rows and columns and lines in it, but just as a, ma a matrix of uh, rows and columns. So it's, it's the addressing of the individual cells of the matrix that uh, and implemented mechanically that is what is important and, and that I'm going to try and explain to you how it's done because based on how it's done um, you get to know about how you can refresh it and change the information in the different cells, refresh the cells and uh, reset them if necessary. And every uh, column is basically uh, consists of, of a little slide uh, uh, that uh, serves to lock or unlock every uh, pin in that particular column. I've used pins for to produce the dots uh, and dot and no dot is presence or absence of surface of, a, of the pin, I mean the top end of the pin coming above the surface of the surface plate or below the surface. Of, so it's basically pushing a pin up or letting it drop down. So, but uh, it is essential that you control the pin, either to lock it in its recessed position or to lock it when it's raised position after the information has been set. So to do that, the easiest way that I've discovered would be to foul the bow in which the pin uh, passes up or down. But to lock it, you just some get something in to foul the bow. And uh, th that I've done with using these little slides that the bow is, uh, passes through two plates. And so between the two plates, we've got a slide that goes in and just uh, inserts itself a little bit into the bow and blocks the pin from moving up and down. The pin has a flange that catches onto the side of the slide and it's either locked above the slide or below the slide the flange. And uh, when uh, when uh, one of the columns is enabled, the slide moves into a position where the bow is clear again and the flange is free. The flange on the pin uh, is uh, passes through little holes in the slide and uh, there's no fouling over there so the pin can move up or down and uh, gravity is used to drop the pin in my example although I haven't been able to put springs I've got them in my specifications but uh, springs are too small and I couldn't get could uh, get springs uh, in the quantities I needed so if you have a restoring spring the pin would drop very fast the moment you enable uh, or enabling is basically opening a column slide triggering it open. The moment you trigger it open by, in this case, by moving it up a little bit, all the pins drop by gravity. At the point they drop, you've got to set your data. So the dropped pins remain in their fallen position and uh, with the rows, I've converted the row slide underneath each pin uh, into a little uh, actuating mechanism. It's basically like pushing a little wedge under each pin. So the pins that would have say the data 1 would have a, the wedge pushed under them and they pop up again. Then at that point the slide is closed again. So you've dropped everything to zero, you push the wedges under the pins in the column that you want and the pins that you want in the one position and then you've locked it again. So you've got some pins go up and some pins down depending on your information locked in there appropriate position. Then the cam keeps rotating, it moves to the next position. The next column slide opens, data is set and reset again and uh, that sequence follows all the way from left to right on this display. Uh, rows and columns are basically what we are dealing with over here. The columns are the opening and closing of the column slides, the rows are the actuating mechanism slides with little miniature wedges. Now what happens is when some slides are closed, only one slide, column slide is open at any one given any moment while uh, while refreshing. The slides open sequentially from left to right. So assuming you say the third slide is open, the first and second are closed and the fourth and fifth onwards are all closed. So when the, the row slides move underneath, the, 
the closed uh, the columns that I disabled, there's no no change to any pins in in that, that area. It's only the column that is enabled. The pins drop and are set. The ones that are closed, the wedges have no effect because the wedges are basically made out of little springs. And uh, so, if the column slides are closed, they can't uh, lift the pin. Then the springs buckle. It's a it's a tiny little spring and it's got a profile that is designed to either kick up or allow the pin to rest in its position. So yeah, that it will be visible in, uh, in the drawing. But uh, that's basically how, although the rows actually just slide under every pin, only the the particular column that has the pin enabled are affected by the the by the row slide. The, the the row slides can either not be actuated or be actuated in any combination or all can be actuated at any one time. If all are actuated, all the pins in that column will jump up. But the columns that are not actuated, there's no change in the pins because these little wedges just get compressed so under the pin. So nothing happens there. So that's how this uh, device actually works. The cam is chosen because uh, we want to do with these actuators are big and bulky and uh, I've got uh, would need 40 for the columns and 15 for the rows and since the columns always follow a sequential pattern of refreshing we are not doing random uh, type of refreshing here although it's possible if you have separate actuators for the columns but if you use a sequential uh, set of enabling for the columns then uh, you can enable uh, can refresh a page left to right sequentially uh, with one revolution of the cam, the bank of cam. So that's the, what I'm using. I'm not using individual actuators, which would be too complicated and too not complicated so much as space consuming. Whereas I, by having a bank of cams, which is controlled by a stepper motor, you know, which will be finally controlled by a stepper motor, you've just got that little motor there. Or even if you split the bank of cams into two or three, you've got just two or three stepper motors to control for the columns, whether it's 40 columns or 80 columns or any other number. And uh, I've got, I need only five, uh, 15 actuators here, electromagnets of sorts, to control the 15 uh, rows. So that's a significant reduction, just uh, 15 actuators and uh, one cam controlling stepper motor to control 600 pins. Now, if I increase the number of rows, bank of cams would still remain the same. I just need a few more row actuators, three, four, three or four for every line that I add if I'm using braille cells, uh, six or eight dot braille cells. So that's how there's a, there's a very significant drastic reduction. Uh, a huge page, an eight cell matrix, 25 lines, would still require only 100 actuators if the bank of cams is used. If there's some other means to later to actuate uh, uh, that's more efficient than an electromagnet, maybe uh, they call them electronic muscles or whatever. If those things are uh, improved on and are made to perform the way they should be, then we wouldn't uh, we'd be able to have a more of a random access type of control, which is not really needed uh, when refreshing a page, even television screens and uh, digital displays. They try and avoid random access to reduce the complexity of the controlling of such a huge matrix, which is the same principle that I've used here. So I trust this it would explain how refreshing is done. Refreshing the, is basically enabling column by column while setting the data. So every time the column is enabled, every column that is enabled, the data is set. Column is locked. Data the data. Uh, the rows get ready for the next set of data. Next column is enabled. Next set of data set on that in the next enabled column. The column after being the data set, column is closed. The row actuators go back to wait for the next set of data. And the cam rotates one more time, going to the next column. Likewise, from left to right, till the entire page is refreshed. 